I'm going to talk to you, of course we can't have you here and not talk to you about the incredible fairy tale that was Leicester City in that season. We showed at the start of the programme, if you were with us, how with seven games to go, Leicester City looked for all the world like it was, it was relegation. And then suddenly this shift winning seven of the last nine, which propelled you into this extraordinary season. How significant was Claudio Ranieri in all of that, who arrived that summer? Well, he was, he was obviously, I mean, any manager is significant, you know, they're, they're the man in charge. But I think what was built in, in the club during that period was, was and, and, and even to this day, you look at, for example, the, the backroom staff, still a lot of the same people that Nigel put in place back then. And what, we, what was kind of the, the awakening in those last 10 games was that we found a way of winning and we found a confidence in winning and it kind of snowballed. And it was, it was this, uh, yeah, we, we obviously didn't keep the clean sheets in the first 10 games or so, but we, we were kept winning games and, and that confidence was there. And as we've seen tonight, confidence makes, makes such a difference. When in that season, because everyone was just debating, talking, is it possible that Leicester can win the league? At what stage did you think this could really happen? I remember there was a game before, sorry for interrupting, there was a game at Man City that you won away. I think, obviously, they were aside then compete with you for the time. I think you won away there 3-1. And that was the first time I thought Leicester could win the league. I mean, what was the feeling in the dressing room? Um, I always... I, I, I've thought at Swansea away, we, we were top at Christmas. Hmm. Um, I remember we, we beat Swansea, I think we beat them 3-0 away. And then I remember we were going on our Christmas do after and sitting on the bus with some of our lads talking, saying, this is, um, this is possible. <laughs> this is possible. Uh, and then... Yeah, I think where the world kind of opened up to the, all right, this is actually potentially going to happen is the Man City game because we, we didn't just go there and beat them. We beat them convincingly. We, we played really, really well, played within our style. You know, it, it's, not, it's not the style that pl teams play these days, but within the way and the structure that we play, we, we played incredibly well. And um, yeah, I do remember sitting in the car on the way home after that game thinking, right, this is, uh, this is it. But even to handle the pressure in the latter stages, when everyone had decided this was possible, you were unblinkered. Yeah, but what did we have to lose? Like, really, we, no one expected it. But we, yeah, we just got on with our job. It was, uh, yeah, like I say, it was, a, it was this snowball effect that just kept going. And we had, li yeah, we had little blips <coughs> on the way. We had the, 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 the loss against, uh, against Arsenal in the last minute. Um, we had uh, the West Ham game where, where John Moss sends off uh, Jamie Vardy and we, uh, Leo Joe equalises with, with a penalty right at the end. So we, we had to go through these, these little moments. But ultimately, I don't know, we, we had a supreme confidence that we were going to do it. It was actually seven years ago tomorrow that Chelsea and Spurs drew 2-2. And you'll remember, did you watch the game, incidentally? <laughs> I watched the last 20 minutes. <laughs> Why, what were you doing? I, I was actually at home. I was, uh, I was with my, my, my family and uh, I didn't want to watch. I hadn't watched any of Tottenham's games all the way through. I, I just, I didn't like the, the feeling of not having control, a bit like tonight. I didn't, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that feeling. <laughs> you you didn't too. go to the, uh, the Vardy party, no? I went later. Okay. I went later. I felt, I felt that it was important to be with my family that day if it could happen. Um, because it, the journey had started for us, you know, back Darlington from, uh, from when I was young. I, think, I, I felt it was important that, that I share that moment with them as well. Because, the, you know, my, my wife, my children, they've, all, they've been on this journey with me all the way. And, and for, for it to culminate in, in, in winning the league, I felt it was, was important. If it, if it was going to happen to be with them. But I was actually still raging from the day before because we, uh, we drew at Old Trafford. And, and I really wanted to win at Old Trafford. And of course, it all came home when um, you got the trophy against Everton. There were some extraordinary scenes. We were, we were both there on the pitch uh, that afternoon. And I guess that's when the, the feeling started to sink in for you guys as well. What did it actually feel like? Having, having started that journey, as you say, back at Darlington, to then be a, a champion? Well, I had this conversation with my dad uh, about probably about four or five years before it. I was going back to my old school uh, to do a like like a, a talk to because it was it was a sports school and about like ambition and these kind of things and my my dad kind of just said to me right well you've always said privately 
that you you're going to win the Premier League? Do, do you dare to say it publicly? Because this is a this is the opportunity to say it. Um, so I did. I, I, I put a picture of myself up on the on the screen where I was holding the trophy from from back in the day when my dad had won it. Um, and I said, I, I made them a promise, the next time I, I come here, I'll, I'll have won it myself. Um, I don't know where that confidence comes from or came from, but I always had a belief that, that one day I would win it. Um, the problem with winning is, is that it's addictive and uh, it's very, very difficult. So, so once you have won it, nothing will ever replace that. Of, at the time, you realise, I'm sure, how, how big winning the Premier League is, but for Leicester to win the Premier League, does, does the achievement actually grow the longer away you are from when it happens in terms of, like it, it, it sinks in the longer you look back and think, when would a team like Leicester or their journey ever win a Premier League title again? Yeah, I, th I think it does in, in many ways. Um, <clears throat> I think while, while, while still being active, I, I don't really think back a lot. I don't really... Uh, spend a lot of time thinking back but if I do take a step back and look at a team like ourselves to go and win the best league in the world then uh, then it is an, an outrageous achievement and um, I yeah I do I, I see now ha having left the Premier League everybody watches everywhere in the world and, and also that I remember going to America after winning the league and all of a sudden you're getting recognised in America and, and everyone had seen this story. So, so it, it, yeah, it, it, the achievement does, does get bigger and bigger because now with, with some of the teams and the way they're playing, you can't imagine your, your Man Cities or Arsenals or these, or these teams getting beaten by, by smaller clubs over a 38-game season. It, it plays out like a film and, and your story plays out like a film as well. I mean, there's wonderful pictures of... of the actual title celebrations, but a, a couple of years later, you went from the ecstasy of that to the, to the tragedy of losing someone that you were very close to, the Leicester owner, in, in that horrendous um, helicopter crash when, and you were right on the scene. When, when something like that happens, what does it do to your perspective on football, perspective on, on life? <laughs> I think uh, it's impossible for it not to impact every aspect of your life it still does to this day you know just to get in any kind of aircraft is uh, is difficult um, in a way it makes you a lot more grateful it makes you a lot more grateful for what you have and what you've you know what, what you're doing every single day it also makes you scared that and because you know that it can be taken away from you instantly um, and if it can happen to to a, a man as a, as good as Kumvichai then uh, it, it can happen to anyone, and and yeah, it, it it's one of these things that my uh, my goalkeeper coach for Denmark, who who sadly died last year as well, he always used to say to me, "There's the, there's a number for everything. You're, there's a number of games you'll play in your life. There's a number of times you'll breathe, and there's a number. Everything has a number, and and it kind of hit home really when uh, when that happened." Um, and, and obviously himself dying as well. These, these things, they, they hit you quite hard. And, uh, and I've, unfortunately, I've experienced a few of these, these moments. Um, Christian Eriksen as well. Yeah, with, with, with Christian as well. Luckily, a very different outcome. Um, but, but yeah, it, it does, it, it scares you in a way. It, it does change your perspective on life completely. Um, like I say, I, I'm, a, I'm a lot more wary of things. I'm a lot probably a lot more scared of things in, in many ways, but also a lot more thankful for, for the, the days and the, and the things that I do have. And it must as well tighten your bond with a football club. Players come, players go. But the things that you've been through, the experiences that you've had with Leicester City, do you feel like that story still has another chapter to run? I don't think my chapter with Leicester will ever end. Um, the, you know, we joked before, I still say we. Um, the, the club will always be a part of it. I, I came to Leicester as a young man needing a home and, and needing somewhere to, to be accepted for who I was and not for what everyone else thought I should be. Um, and, and Leicester gave me that. And um, yeah, the, the, there's definitely, even, even after 11 years, the, there's, still something, there's still something unwritten for me there. Casper, obviously, 
speaking to you tonight on the show, watching you perform, you, you, you're definitely a, a huge character, got a personality. I mean, we see the odd goalkeeper becoming a manager. Would that be something you'd be interested in or coming into this side of the game? It feels like you will have a role in the game when you finish playing. I don't think I could ever leave football. I love it too much. Um, it's such a fine balance, I find, uh, uh, to, to, to kind of talk about what's next. Because for me, there's a long, long way to that happens. You know, um, I, f I feel physically great. I, I want to play if I can, next four, five, six years, if, I, if possible. Um, but afterwards, yeah, I, I, there's lots of things that does in, do interest me. Th things like this interest me, but management, maybe a, a sporting director role, something along those lines. Um, I enjoy performance, not just in, when it comes to, uh, to football, but in general, I, I really enjoy people that are at an elite level of whatever they're performing. Um, you know, I, I work a lot with, uh, with psychologists and, and performance psychologists, and that, that side of it interests me a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm obviously considering what may be the case one day, but, but at the moment, like I said, there's a, there's a fine number of games you get to play in your life, and I'm, I'm trying to enjoy every single one of them, the ones that I, that I get.